Hey guys, Brian Hunt here with you again. This is our second video in the series we're doing on project management, project workflow, and project backup. And in this video, we're gonna have two tips for you guys. The first one is on how we rename our files to make it easier for us to manage them, to find them later, to search for them in Finder on a Mac, and also how we back up our working project files from one hard drive to another hard drive and the software we use for that. So let's get straight into it. We're on uh, the desktop here. I have a project opened up. Uh, this is project actually we, we've worked on before. I just restored an older version of it. And before we start working on it, we're using the bus theory here, as you can see. Um, before we start working on this project, one of the things we like to do is rename our files, our different kind of clips. We have drone, we have FS7, we have GH4, we have an Osmo. and why we want to rename these is that it really helps us when we want to go back to clips later. Uh, if there's we're storing footage somewhere else and we're like, ah, oh, where was that clip? We want to be able to go into our finder and type in some of these things and have some clips match. It's way easier than having all your stuff, you know, just like a numbered sequence. Also, if you're delivering this footage for somebody else to edit or somebody else to work on, we're going to put information here that will really help the editor understand that and know what LUTs or what kind of different things they need to do to treat this footage. So now we're into our clips on our FS7 and what we're gonna do to rename it, it's a very simple process. We're gonna highlight all the clips, we're gonna right click and we're gonna go to rename and we're gonna rename all 309 of these items. So it will change the number sequence a bit, but we're not as concerned about the numbered sequence as we are about the naming structure of the video file. So when we go to rename these items, we're going to go in here and I'm going to start with calling it what the project is, where we shot it, the date, I mean you could do a numbered date here, and we're going to put in the camera it was on. And I'm also going to put on the color profile. We shot an S-Log2 and it's all 4K. Sometimes there'll be a mixture in here between 4K and 1080 if we're doing some slow motion, but this gives you an idea. And then we want to start with a numbered sequence. And if you didn't see this stuff come up first when you brought this over and you had to make sure it's not replace text, you need to have it to format. Okay, so now we just hit rename. Boom, everything has been renamed. So we would do the same thing and I would just make it easier. I'm gonna copy this part here. I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna to go to the drone footage. I'm gonna highlight it all. And I'm gonna go back into rename these 10 clips. This is the drone stuff. Um, again, if you if it comes up the first time for you, and it looks like this. All you need to do is change it over to format. And then I'm gonna change this over. And then I'm gonna put in, it's a DJI, it was a Phantom. I'm gonna put drone in there just for a reference too. If I'm searching for drone clips, I'm gonna say rename and everything's been renamed. So now if I need to go to a finder level at a different time and I wanna quickly go through some stuff and look for my drone footage, I could type in drone on the finder level and all the clips that have been named with drone are gonna come up. So that's the first part of this video is just telling you how we rename these clips and why we rename these clips. It's a really simple process. You can do it whatever way you like or put the information in there, but you can see how that will be valuable for somebody else looking at or how it can speed things up when you need to find a certain clip later on. You have that built in, that information built into the actual name of the file. Now we're getting into the second part of the video. We're gonna talk about how we back up and how we store our working project files. Here we use OWC RAID external hard drives. We have two of them and we have this on three of our editing systems like this. So you can see on the date of these, it says 2015, 16 terabyte, and then I have another 16 terabyte backup. So the process basically is these are two drives that are mirrored exactly. We're using software to write from one drive to the other drive every night. Whatever footage has been added to this drive will be added to this drive. So if this whole drive kicks the bucket, we still have all our project files here. And when we're finished with the project, we backed it up on LTO tape and we backed it up on our NAS. And we're gonna show you that process in a separate video later on. But for this video, we jump onto the computer. I'm gonna show you the software that we use. So with the software here, and there's a link to it in the description of the video, it's called Carbon Copy Cloner. It's $50 to buy. It's an awesome software. We've been using this for probably five or six years and doing this process with it. So you can download the free trial of it before buying it. 
we have this is going to look like carbon copy cloner will look like when you first open it up what we're going to do here is we're going to make a new task uh, we can call this 16 terabyte backup and then we're going to take our 16 terabyte drive we're going to put it in there that's our source that's what we're pulling from this is our working drive and then we're going to take our backup drive and we're going to put that into our destination okay so uh, we're going to clone here all the files and if we actually delete stuff on our 16 terabyte drives when it does the backup it will notice that those files are no longer here and so it will make it so these files are also no longer there it's actually just a clone and it's done daily of this drive to this drive so now we want to turn off the safety net the problem with putting the safety net on if you have the exact same size of drives is that this drive will start filling up bigger and bigger and more space than this one because it's making a safety net it's almost making a revision history like you would have on a time machine backup you can then click here to run a task so you want to run this task on a daily basis and then you can pick it's going to repeat every day and when we want it to start now we're going to set this up so we can run this once a day at this time so this will run daily so carbon copy cloner is not just great because it lets you mirror your drive it will also give you an error if there was any problems on that transfer that happens we set it up so it happens at night when we're not editing carbon copy cloner will come up with a window saying we successfully backed up or transfer these files over if there was any issues that window would say we had issues we couldn't back stuff up that might happen if there was a corrupt uh, video file or a corrupt project file you could have some issues that way but it lets you know that there is something wrong with it and you can go into the project and you can fix things and you can run your backup again so one other thing we do is all our media cards after we've transferred them to our external hard drive for our working projects we do not format these cards until we've seen the backup become successful the next morning. So in the next video in this series, I'm going to talk to you guys about how we use Project Manager within Premiere to consolidate all of our footage and all of our edits from one project and how we then archive that to our NAS system and why we do it that way. So thanks so much guys for taking the time to watch this video. I hope there are some great tools and some takeaways from this video for you. If you have some software and tips that you use for the way you back up your projects, please leave them in the comments below. Let's make a discussion here. It'd be great to see what other people are doing. This isn't the only way to do things. This is just a way that we found and a system that we found that works well for us. If you like this video, please give us a like. Please think about subscribing to our channel. And we look forward to seeing you on the next one.